this Ed Butt thing is crazy. This this article is so crazy. I had to come back and make a part two. Daily Mail exclusive. I thought I was going to be the next to die at Ed Buck's house. Man tells Daily Mail TV how Democratic donor paid him $250 and injected him with meth after fetish sex sections with white long johns as police probe two black men's death details. Gagnon told Daily Mail TV that he was homeless um, and couch surfing in L.A. in April 2018 when he met Buck on the gay dating scene, Adam for Adam. Buck offered him $200 to spend the evening with him at his apartment, he said. Gagnon said, I had sex for money other times, but I don't make it a habit. The first day we met, I met him at his house. There's a gate at the main entrance, and he buzzed me up. He's on the second floor. When I walked in, the lights were dim, a mattress in the middle of the floor, three mirrors surrounding the mattress, and a flat screen TV mounted on the wall. Gagnon says that the mirrors were about seven foot high and appeared to be suspended on ropes so that they tilted forward over the bed. It just kind of felt weird, he told Daily Mail TV. Anywhere you look in this room, you see yourself in the mirror. What mostly caught my attention was the windows. They were covered in fabric. You couldn't see out of them and nobody could see in. Gagnon said he had a couple of drinks and chatted with Buck. He knew my situation. We discussed my lifestyle and what I was going through, how long I've been using crystal meth, he said. He was a good person when I first met him. He was really cool. He was calm. He was collected. The apartment looked like a club scene or something. We just sat at the table trying to get to know each other and others and, and the fetishes that he likes. He likes the bulge in your pants. He asked you to wear cock rings and pocket things. He's fixated on pictures and looking at you. He says two men effing each other and other, other gay men do that. He used the expletive that I'm not going to use. He may do touching or looking, but he doesn't do penetration. He gave me a little oral and I gave him a little oral. He's more oral or foreplay, dressing you up and you being his sex slave. He had a certain way of what you had to wear in his house to play in his game. When you first come into the house, you take off your clothes. He says, I want you to put on this, and this is what entertains me. I had no problem with it. He gave me some Tommy Hilfiger white tidy whities a muscle t-shirt, and some long johns. White knee-high socks. The underwear was laid around the bed. Everything is folded up nice and neat. The 28-year-old said that during his first meeting, he smoked crystal meth with Buck. We smoked together. We passed the bowl back and forth, and he was like, I've been smoking all day. Go ahead and enjoy. There are pipes everywhere. There are baggies and straws. Gagnon said that Buck was open to the fact that he was having dates with multiple men. Young, black, handsome, and well-endowed. He was quite open about being very generous to the black community. <sighs> I'm his type, and pretty much half of the black community is his type, vulnerable and depressed. If you're in a depressive state, that's the energy that feeds him. Gagnon said that he stayed for around four and five, four or five hours on the first date. After the first time, I was like, well, that's kind of easy. I think I can do that again. I felt comfortable enough to come back, he said. Then the 28-year-old said a few days later, he left L.A. and moved to Dallas to spend time with his brother who was dying from cancer. But soon he got a call from Buck asking him to visit. I was probably in Dallas for about two or three weeks before Buck offered to pay for my ticket to back to California. He wanted me to come to California for the weekend. Gagnon says he took Buck up on his offer, but this time he came back over to Buck. He wanted Buck wanted to inject him with a syringe of crystal meth, known among drug users as pointing. The 20-year-old 28-year-old said that before meeting Buck, he had never injected crystal meth. This time he introduced he indru introduced the point, said Gagnon. He asked me if it was the first thing he said. I allowed him because it was my first time trying it. He has this big black old school flashlight. It unscrews and there's a whole bunch of drugs in there. Gagnon says he saw a little bag with a small amount of what he believed to be crystal meth and another bag of a lot of crystal meth in it. He said he didn't see other drugs other than Viagra. He always told me in my house, I'm the only person that can administrate. He was the only person who could give the drugs to anybody. He only smoked. He would make a needle to inject himself, but he would first inject me. I never saw him inject himself in front of me. These are his drugs and his needles. Gagnon said that Buck injected the crystal meth into the veins on his arm and he reacted badly to the drugs and became aggressive. It hit me. My body went to tingling. My mouth went to jittery. I got so high that I was enraged. I cussed him out and made a big scene at his apartment and pretty much he put me out. He said, I changed back into my clothes. He paid me my $250 and I left. Gagnon said that there was no one else in the apartment during the meeting because there was a knock on the door. He said that Buck cracked the door open and spoke to the man through it. Before leaving the apartment, Gagnon took pictures and secretly filmed Buck on his phone asking him on camera about the crystal meth. Buck refused to answer and asked if Gagnon was filming him. The two men stayed in touch for four months later. Around September 22nd, Buck offered again to pay Gagnon to come over to his house. He said this time the atmosphere was tense. Over the summer, Gagnon had learned about the death of Jamel Moore. Buck was investigated for the suspect murder when Moore, 26, was found dead of a meth overdose at his home July 2017. That investigation was closed when West Hollywood police said they found insufficient evidence, but it's now open again. Blah, blah, blah. Gagnon said, I had called him and said, so did you kill the boy? He was nonchalant. He changed the subject. He wouldn't answer anything about Jamel Moore. He added, the third time I met Buck, I was stupid and dumb. At least he knows. Like, I feel so bad for these boys. Like, but family, going forward, 
your first mind. Please follow it. Um, I was dumb. I wanted to go back for more. I wanted to get him to admit that he had done something to Jamel Moore's death. He had something to do with Jamel Moore's death. I went back for more trouble and fell back into his shit. Okay. I was going through my drug abuse and I needed the money. So I met up with him again. When you're in that situation, you do anything to be able to survive. I was thinking about it, about it's hurting me. It's killing me. I was thinking I need this money. I need this food. I need a place to sleep. Oh, it's heartbreaking. Gagna said when he arrived, he didn't like the atmosphere. Buck wasn't himself. He was too jittery, like he had a task to do, but was procrastinating. He was determined to finish something, but I don't know what he was determined to do. The 28-year-old said Buck offered him a drink of Gatorade. When he drank it, Gagna said he began to feel as if he'd been drugged, and he suspected that the drink contained a drug such as GHB, which we did the usual. I changed into his clothes. I drank most of the Gatorade. Then within a few minutes, I felt woozy. I didn't feel like my normal self. I could barely keep my eyes open. I was real drowsy and limp. I was laying in the middle of the floor. Gagnon does not believe that Buck raped or sexually assaulted him while he was incapacitated. Buck said, you're not high enough for me. I want you to do another point. I was so blurred in the situation. He actually pointed me. And when he ejected me with crystal meth, my body heated up like fire. My head felt like I was going to explode. And I just felt so dizzy and limp. My body was numb. I could barely move. It was a matter of seconds. My speech started slurring. I was in and out, he said. I saw him preparing the drugs at the table. He said, you've got to watch. I couldn't really stand up. I really thought I was the next person going to be dead at Ed Buck's house. Gannon said, Gagnon said that Buck didn't say anything while he was lying on the floor, unable to move, and just moved around him, watching him. He was touching things, periodically picking up things and moving them around. He was quiet as a church mouse, but you could feel when someone has an agenda. He took my phone. I was so scared. I felt the sensation of death. I felt like death walked into my soul. Jesus. Gagnon said that he felt that he dragged himself to his feet because he knew he had to drink water. I went and drunk out the faucet. I found my phone and I called my mother and I said, Mom, I feel like he's going to kill me. I think I'm going to die. She said, Baby, I love you. Gagnon said he lay praying for two and a half hours while Buck wandered around the apartment seemingly unconcerned. When he came down from his high, Gagnon told Buck that he wanted to go outside for a walk. The Democrat donor gave Gagnon $60 and told him to get a drink at the nearby bar. Instead, Gagnon went to a corner store and bought himself a taser and two knives to protect himself. While he was out, he noticed Buck's friend and a neighbor following him. He recognized the man from his pre previous visit is describing him as a white in his 50s about 6'4 and weighing about 215 pounds so he has help so he's not the only one when Gagnon returned to the apartment he said Buck had become cold and distant and asked Gagnon to leave because he had another young man coming around to his house he started blowing me off and brushing me to the side he was saying how about you go to Las Vegas for the weekend when you're ready to go home I'll pay for your ticket back to Minnesota it sounded like a good idea just to get away from him said the 28 year old Buck paid Gagnon $300 and bought his flight back to Minnesota and the two never spoke again he said looking back on that day I was frightened I was vulnerable I was frustrated because I allowed this person to harm me I put myself in harm's way again the 28 year old is now living in Brooklyn Brooklyn New York with two close friends from his hometown in Minneapolis Jermaine is currently fighting to stay off drugs and he is due to enter rehab later this month for his addiction issues Gagnon says he did not report Buck to the police at the time because he had no other way to pay for his plane ticket home he felt extremely paranoid about what had happened he said he has taken pictures with Hillary Clinton who knows who he knows it just amazes me at the same time that he degrades gay black men who live with HIV and makes them go through more pain and struggle I don't understand the human mind that can do that Gagnon added it frustrates me when I heard about the second body just imagine what my mother went through when she heard the phone call from me and what Jamel's mother is going through it's going to take for him to kill a whole village before they do anything about it Gagnon believes a Democratic donor should be arrested. He needs to be put away for the rest of his life. I want to see Ed Buck prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. These boys are not just dying of an overdose. It's not a coincidence another person has died in the same home during the same situation. This man is a murderer and he's getting away with it. And it's all because the media wants to sweep it under the rug because he's rich. If my body was a little weaker, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be telling you the story. I would have died at Ed Buck's house that night. Buck's attorney did not respond to repeated requests for comment from the Daily Mail about Gagnon's allegations. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the rest of this is all things that I have told you before. But this is crazy. Now look at the news report. Young black. Handsome. The 28-year-old Minnesota native says he met Buck on the dating site Adam for Adam. Their first date, May 2018. When you first come into the house, you come out of your clothes and you put on his clothes. Gagnon gave us this video. That's a white mattress on the floor of the living room, and you can see Buck wearing white long johns and a red t-shirt. We smoked a little bit of crystal meth. The drugs got more intense. So he said, have you ever tried a uh, point? And I'm like, what's the point? He's like an injection. You inject crystal meth into your vein. 